Hey everyone, Rick at Word Search. In this video, we're going to review the book and Bible translation windows and the toolbars available inside of them. I have highlighted the sections of the video inside of the description area below so that you can jump to a particular section that you would like to learn about. Let's start out with the basics of Windows. First, as you open up books, Bible translations, and functions inside of Word Search, these items will appear in Windows. Windows will be auto arranged to share the screen. However, you can turn off auto arrange inside of the Window drop down menu and then resize your windows to different shapes if you like. In the top right hand corner of the window, you have some options to use. First is the Minimize button, which will allow you to minimize the windows down to your window bar, giving you more room to look at the windows that you are actively using. This is more efficient than closing down windows all the time, as you won't have to go and find the items again and reopen them. The next button is the Maximize or Restore button. This will allow you to give full screen view to one of your windows, or if you're already in full screen view, you can restore it back to the multi window view. The final button is the Close button. This will allow you to get rid of a tab or a window whenever you're finished using it. As you open up books inside a word search, they will naturally group with other similar books. This is based on the category they are stored in inside of the library. So your Bible translations will open up inside of one window, and your commentaries will open up in a separate window. As you open up multiple books in a category, these books will begin to tab across the top of the window. When you right click on the tab, you have the opportunity to undock that tab into its own window. So if you wanted to look at two Bible translations side by side, without using the parallel Bible, you could open up both Bibles and then choose to undock. You can also move tabs around on your tab bar to put them in the order you want them to appear. The final option is the Close Tab button to close and remove the tab that you're currently viewing. The Knocking tool is the first icon on the toolbar, and it often gets overlooked. However, it's a very important button as it allows you to move and merge your windows and tabs how you would like. To use the Docking tool, simply left click and hold with your mouse, and then drag the window or tab into other windows or into the second display. Certain categories work really well together when combining, such as commentaries and study Bibles, as they provide similar information. With over 70 possible categories for Windows, this will be an important tool when creating desktops to make sure you're making the most efficient desktop possible. The second icon on the toolbar is the Select Another Book button. When clicked, it will allow you to select another book from the same category. This works great when you're in a desktop and you want to just look briefly at a book without adding an extra tab to your desktop. Of course, if you use it in your Bibles or commentaries for a brief look at a translation or book, you can use the carousel to get you back to your favorite books. These lists can be quite long, so it's oftentimes faster to hover over the list with your mouse and then use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to find your book faster. The third icon is the Table of Contents. When clicked, it will open up the Table of Contents on the left hand side of the book. You can expand it by dragging the bar to make it bigger. The Table of Contents will give you easy access to navigate to all of the information in your book. In your Bible translations, it will include information about what manuscripts were used and the thought process behind the translation. In your books, it will include any introductory and extra materials. One important section found in most table of contents is the abbreviations used inside of that book. Inside of the table of contents is a filter much like the filter found in the library tab. By typing into the filter, it will show you only the items that match your search query inside of the table of contents. When you finish with your filter, click on the X to clear it out and to show your whole table of contents again. Inside of some books, you will find special features. 
Special features will be signified by the orange asterisk. You can see what special features are available in a book inside of the table of contents. Here in the NAC, we have charts, pictures, and maps. Once you're done with the table of contents, click on the icon again to close it. The next area on the icon bar is the navigation box. There are three types of navigation boxes in our program. The book chapter verse navigation box will be commonly found in your Bible translations, commentaries, and study notes. It allows you to type in a book chapter verse reference you would like to go to, or you can click on the down arrow for the book chapter verse selector. The data navigation box is commonly found in devotions and allows you to type in a date you would like to go to, or clicking on the down arrow brings up the calendar selector. Finally, we have our topical navigation box, which is usually found in dictionaries, illustration books, word study books, and handbooks. You can type in the topic you're looking for, or the down arrow will give you a list of all the available topics. Chapter books will not have a navigation box inside of the program. The next two buttons on the toolbar are the previous and next chapter buttons. Of course, if you're using the scroll mouse wheel or the arrow keys on your keyboard, you will not need to use these buttons in your Bible translation, but you will need to use them to cycle chapters in your books. The final way to navigate through your books is with page numbers. If a book has page numbers, you can find them down here on the bottom of the window next to the carousel. Clicking on the page number will allow you to jump to a specific page number in that book. The next three icons are the annotation icons, which allow you to interact with your books and Bible translations. The first icon is the Book Notes button. The Bible Notes button is found on the main icon toolbar, and there is an individual video for it that you can find in the video description below. To make notes in your book, click on the Book Notebook button to access your notebook. The program will automatically create headings for you, and you can type your information in below the headings. Book Notes are an automatic save function, so you never have to worry about saving your notes. If you wish to delete a note, you can use the Delete button found on the right-hand side. Once done, you can click on the notebook icon again to close down the notebook and give you back your full reading screen. Book Notes are great for jotting down some quick information, but Book Notes are not searchable and are not printable inside of the program. The next type of annotation is bookmarking. You can bookmark any passage of the Bible or section of a book for easy return to the same place later. To make a bookmark, click on the bookmark icon and then click on any of the boxes on the screen. You then have the opportunity to name your bookmark as well as place it in a category. I would highly recommend creating some common categories like Bible passages, commentaries, and websites to help you organize your bookmarks so you don't end up with a long list of mixed bookmarks. Your previously made bookmarks can be accessed in your library tab under Bookmarks and in your resource panel under Favorites. To delete a bookmark, you can right-click on it in the library tab or in the resource panel, or you can simply uncheck it inside of the book. Our final annotation option is highlighting. The highlighting option has many choices that can be accessed through the down arrow. You can choose a style of highlighting, either normal block or underlining. While this is a personal preference, one really nice thing about the underline option is that you can underline in multiple colors. Below style choices are the different color options. If you wish to name your colors, you can use the Edit Legends option at the top of the highlighter dropdown. At the very bottom of the dropdown is the highlight eraser. To highlight a passage, first pick your color and style of highlighting that you wish to do. Then highlight the section with your mouse and click on the highlighter icon. If you wish to delete your highlight, simply choose the highlight eraser and then click on the highlight you wish to erase. The next four icons on the Bible toolbar are preference buttons. The first icon is the Show Strong's Number button and is only available in the King James Version, 
the New American Standard Version 95, the Holman Christian Standard Version, and the English Standard Version. When turned on, the Strong's number will appear to the right of the words they represent. The second icon is the Paragraph and Verse Mode. Paragraph mode is what printed Bibles are usually printed in to save paper and space. In our digital Bibles, we can move to verse mode, which will take up more room, but makes finding verses easier since every verse starts on the left-hand side. The third preference icon toggles Jesus' words between red and black. The final preference icon is for our interlinear Bibles. Interlinear Bibles are made up of rows of information. With the preference icon, you can turn on or off any of the rows that you may or may not need. So if I don't need the pronunciation icon, I can turn off the pronunciation row and get more of the information I do need on the screen. Our next icon is our grouping or linking option. The grouping option will keep all of your book, chapter, verse, organized books together as long as they're in the same group. So as I scroll in my Bible, which is in group 1, my commentary in group 1 follows along. If you click on the grouping option, it will turn off grouping and leave that window in a group all by itself. You can also use the down arrow to change the group number. In the program, you have the ability to make up to four groups. Tabs and windows are color-coded to help you recognize quickly what group they're in. Group 1 is always gray slash blue. Group 2 is always red, group 3 is always green, and group 4 is always purple. So if I was studying both 1st and 2nd Timothy in a desktop, I could create a group of books to study 1st Timothy in group 1, while creating a second group of books for 2nd Timothy and keeping those books together. You can also make one of the windows the driver by choosing the driver option. This window will command all the other windows to follow it, but it will not follow any of the other windows. This is ideal for when you want some freedom in your commentaries, but want your Bible to stay anchored in a specific spot. The final icon on our Bible toolbar is the targeting button. To use the target Bible window, simply open up a Bible window and click on the target button. You will notice that grouping turns off and the target button looks pushed in. Now, whenever you click on a hyperlink, instead of it taking your main Bible window to that location, it will instead target that hyperlink to your target Bible window. This gives you full access to your Bible where you can copy and paste, create highlights and bookmarks, and see as much context as you need. If you'd like to learn more about hyperlinks and accessing them inside a word search, please check out the Handling Your Hyperlinks video link in the description below. Looking to learn more about Word Search and its features? Feel free to join us for our free live training classes. You can find a list of the classes currently available from the Home tab by clicking on the free live online training or by going to the Training tab at WordSearchBible.com. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.